So now that we have this utility function, we can show how it's linked to these indifference curves uh, using that instead of the alternative approach that I developed at the beginning. And we'll also show how economics just borrows most of the ideas from the production function technology or approach and uses it for utility. So let's think about, you know, let's compare these guys. We've got a utility function and we're going to compare that to a production function. So let's give some examples to make this concrete. Production function examples, we've talked about things like perfect substitutes, where you just add the two inputs together, perfect complements, where you have the minimum of two different things, or we've talked about Cobb-Douglas production functions, where they multiply together and they are all raised to exponents. We could have the same thing here, okay? That could be a perfect substitutes form of utility function. Uh, we could have a perfect complements form of utility function. And we'll go over these in a little bit more detail in a later video. And we could have something like s to the one half, l to the one half. And, you know, the production function translates inputs into outputs. A utility function translates goods into utility. For the output, for the inputs, the magnitude matters. So how much labor you use actually is important. And here we can say the magnitude also matters. So how much shelter you have matters. For utility, uh, for production functions, the output also is important. So the magnitude matters. You know, having, it's meaningful. What I mean by that is having twice as much of something means something important rather than having four times as much, okay? And that contrasts with utility where only the order matters, okay? So if, if one utility is three and one utility is two, uh, you know, that means you prefer the one with three over the one with two. And if we doubled all of those, six to four, the preference ordering would still stay the same and nothing else about the problem would change. But in a production function, if we doubled the outputs from three uh, to six, you know, that has real consequence. That actually means we have more stuff that we can observe. We'll be able to see a real effect in the real world. All right, so these are some other differences and similarities. Another parallel is marginal products. So, well, it's not called a product for utility. Marginal utility is when you take the derivative of the utility function with respect to its inputs, or I mean with its, with respect to its, uh, its arguments, which are goods in this case. So it's the derivative of the utility function with respect to S or F. And here we have the marginal product, and it tells us how output changes when you change the inputs. Okay? Let's scroll up a little bit. This guy over here has a returns to scale is an important property of these guys. That means if you double the inputs, you know, does the output double? Does it more than double? We know it's going to go up, but how much up? There's no such concept over here. And that's because we don't care about the magnitude of utility. Okay. We don't really care. If you double the, uh, if you double all the inputs, does that more than double the utility or less than double the utility? Because all that matters is if what the order of the utilities are. So we don't have that concept over there. So that's one difference. Another thing we can talk about is what happens when we try to graph these guys. So over here we've got isoquants, and those come from setting 
finding all combinations of capital and labor or whatever the inputs are equal to some Q, some fixed value of Q. So I have a bar over here. On this side, we have indifference curves. where we set the utility function equal to some uh, fixed amount of utility. And that tells us all the values of food and shelter, all the combinations of food and shelter that yield the same utility. And since when we use a utility function, whichever one has, uh, we prefer whatever option has the highest utility. If these different combinations of food and shelter give us the same utility, then that means we're indifferent uh, among all of them, okay? And the last thing is we've got this uh, parallel idea of the slope of these indifference curves or isoquants. So this is the marginal rate of technical substitution is the name for this guy. And it's the slope of an isoquant. And if you've got k on the vertical axis, it's the partial change in k with respect to l. Over here, we've got the marginal rate of substitution. And that's going to be the slope of the indifference curve. And you know, something like the partial change in F over the partial change in S, okay? And they have kind of similar uh, interpretations. The marginal rate of technical substitution, think technical as in like technology, because this is about a technology, means that if you give up a little bit of labor, how much capital do you need to maintain your same level of output? The marginal rate of substitution says, if you give up a little shelter, for example, how much food do you need to maintain the same utility to be indifferent to that new bundle? So let's talk a little bit about more about these guys uh, in the next video.